It's a new year. I got a new chair. I got a new Thundercats shirt. I got a new camera and a new microphone. Let's do this. Well, it's Obscurathon time again, and as usual, we're going to have a theme. And this year's theme is, It Came From The Thrift Store. See, I go to thrift stores a lot, because it's a good place to go if you want to buy cheap DVDs and Blu-rays. And these days, well, they practically give away VHS tapes. <laughs> Fools. But yeah, it's where a good portion of the collection here came from. And occasionally, I find something unusual. Something that even I don't know anything about. I know, weird, right? But it does happen. So I decided for the next four reviews, I'm going to spotlight some of those thrift store finds. And we're starting off with our only DVD on the list, The Tale of Tilly's Dragon. The Tale of Tilly's Dragon was an animated movie created in 1995 by Mike Stribling, who worked in the animation department of quite a variety of shows and movies, spanning from the late 70s to the early 2000s. This film was the first and only movie he directed and written, and he brought on a team of former Disney animators to work on it. The film made its debut at the 1995 Santa Clarita International Film Festival, where it even won for Best Animated Feature Film. Huh, hopefully we don't have another Sebastian Starbear situation. And it actually has a legit voice cast, including two of my favorites, Frank Welker as the narrator and Kath Sose as Tilly. But I couldn't really dig up anything else on this movie, so I guess we'll just get into it. Here's the tale of Tilly's Dragon. The movie starts with a good old-fashioned Disney-style storybook opening, where we learn about Tilly. Tilly, being somewhat lonely, has developed a little habit of bringing home and befriending dogs, cats, birds, deer, rabbits, squirrels, chipmunks, <laughs> and yes, even mice. And that's how the plague was spread. Good job, Tilly. You killed two-thirds of Europe. We then learn about the dragon named Herman who hatches out of his egg in a scene that looks awfully familiar. Oh no, he has fourth wall breaking powers. Well, hopefully he'll use his powers for good. Or at least when it's funny. Which is not going to be easy because he terrifies all of the little Frank Welker critters that live in the forest. Hey, when you got Frank Welker on your payroll, you better damn well use him to his full capacity. Oh, here's Tilly. Let's hear some of that patented cat so say cuteness. I see you on my way home. But don't follow me any further. The town could be dangerous, and I don't want to see anything happen to you. All right, all right, that's enough. I feel my teeth rotting. We then meet her Uncle George, who is the descendant of St. George, the Dragon Slayer. Ooh, <laughs> this could get awkward. <laughs> Methinks someone hath been hitting the mead a mite too hard. So George is the sole benefactor of the local town, but because of his absent-mindedness, the mayor is constantly swindling money out of him, and it's causing financial problems for the town. Wilner, what more can I finagle from St. George? Ah, uh, I see Welker is using his suave voice. Yes. Go on now, go on, keep moving. I need room for my customers. Go on! Huh. The name of this town must be Welkerville. Maybe these people are the ancestors of the characters from Robot Man. Then Herman shows up and he finds out that people don't take kindly to dragons around these parts. Oh! 
You know, people don't seem too concerned about a dragon just wandering around town. Oh, there's a dragon. Ugh, must be Tuesday. Then Tilly helps him hide from the dog catcher, who seems to be confused about what his job is. It's not your fault. Business is so poor, and these shopkeepers are in such despair. Hey Tilly, when you're talking about bad stuff, try looking a little more upset. Say, are you a dragon? Well, gee, if the horns and scales and sharp teeth don't give it away, I guess the pointed tail confirms it. My uncle thinks he's a dragon slayer, but... <laughs> it's okay, because I don't think he's ever even seen a dragon. He just pretends. Stop being an enabler to your uncle. He's a sick man. Case in point. Away with you! <laughs> I know what you're up to. No trespassing! <laughs> Wait! Mayor Semin set us! It's a trap, you modern day vegetarians! You're all alike! <laughs> I'm having the visions again! The demons are upon us! I must slay everything! Also, did he say vegetarians? You modern day vegetarians! You're all alike! Ah, finally, someone's doing something about those pesky vegetarians! What with them always eating vegetables. We hear about the tower. So, you know about the tower? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. We're here to build it. Fine. Build it, you say? Ha, ha, ha. Yes. Ha, ha. Make it high. Yes, it must be high. You mean high? Yes, high. Just like I am right now. So while Uncle George goes to terrorize some orphans or something, Tilly discovers that Herman can talk. Well, I don't even know your name. It's Herman. Hmm, that voice sounds familiar. Yes, I can talk. I can read, too. Is that Charlie Adler? No, no, that can't be Charlie Adler. H hang on, let me look this up. Uh, John Kassir. John Kassir, John Kassir. <gasps> the Crypt Keeper? Jeez, I didn't expect that. Yeah, no wonder I mistook him for Charlie Adler. They both played Buster Bunny in Tiny Toons. As if that wasn't creepy enough, then we see Tilly and Herman growing a little... too close. I just love this bratwurst. And I just love you, Tilly. No! <laughs> oh, Herman, I love you too. No! Stop! You'll make God angry! Then Tilly goes to try and explain Herman to her uncle. Oh, it looks like he was drinking. Jeez, I was joking about that. Oh. <sighs> oh, Tilly, my dear, where have you been? Tilly, be a good girl and fetch your uncle another pint. And make it quick, I'm starting to see reality again. So presumably, Tilly takes advantage of her uncle's lack of sobriety and just calls Herman her pet without saying he's a dragon, so he allows her to keep him. And she somehow manages to keep that secret for a very long time. I'd question this, but look at who they're trying to fool. Anyway, Frank Welker voice number 16 informs George that he's running out of money, and because the town depended on him so much, he may have to give up the castle and send Tilly away. Which leads to kind of an unsettling, but abruptly ending nightmare. Oh, oh, uh, uh, symbolism? Then it turns out Herman might be sick, so Tilly takes him to the town veterinarian. Well, where else are you gonna take a sick dragon? A regular doctor? <laughs> That's just silly. Yeah, that goes about as well as you'd expect, and the townspeople suddenly remember they're afraid of dragons and immediately go after Herman. Well, time to round up a mob. <laughs> And now for my favorite part of the movie. 
Word gets out about the dragon, and tourists suddenly show up at the town and solve their financial problems. Because there's nothing that brings in cash like a bunch of rubes buying knickknacks at a tourist trap. Hmm, Grunkle Stan may have been onto something. So George catches up to Tilly and Herman, but when he sees that they've become friends, PLUTONIC FRIENDS, he decides to spare him. Mayor Frank Welker shows up and George is gonna cover things by pretending to slay Herman, but because of all the tourists, he begs him to let the dragon live so people will continue to come to the town. So he agrees to back down in exchange for settling his debt. A bit convoluted, but whatever works, I guess. So the town becomes a tourist attraction, George becomes a celebrity, and Tilly and Herman get to stay together. Hopefully in a family-friendly way. So that's the tale of Tilly's Dragon. And it was actually okay. Considering this was an independent film, it came out great. The characters look good, they had some great voice talent behind them, and it's very well animated. You can tell this was done by former Disney animators. The characters were very endearing, too. Even George. Yeah, I made fun of him a lot because of his absent-mindedness and how easy it was to take advantage of him, but they did establish him as a good person who genuinely cared about Tilly and the town. A little shred of humanity in a character like this can go a long way. I think the biggest problem was the whole thing about the mayor extorting money from George. It felt too needless and complicated. I think the whole thing could have been cut and more focus could have been put on Tilly and Herman. I think they were only in half the movie. Speaking of which, that whole thing with them was a bit... uncomfortable. Yeah, I doubt that was the intention, but maybe these scenes could have used some re-evaluation. But other than that, it's not too bad. Just a cute, harmless movie for kids. Well, that's one down. So why don't we keep with the theme of a kid befriending a fantastic creature. In our next movie, we meet a boy and his magical friend. I'M HAVING THE VISIONS AGAIN! THE DEMONS ARE- I hit- I hit the thing back here. <laughs> oh, man. Ugh, sounding crazy is very, uh, hard.